Welcome to Information Systems for Managers. Hopefully this will be an exciting and informative class. Sometimes students approach this class cautiously thinking it will be all about computers and computers may not be their thing. Well, you'll learn about information systems and you'll learn that they're much more than just computers. In fact, information systems are about business. Business cannot be done without information systems. From accounting to production, information systems helps in every process. But you'll learn more about that as we continue. So sit back and enjoy this short intro to the first chapter of your textbook. I guess we should begin by defining an information system. For this lesson, we'll define it as a computer-based system that collects, processes, stores, analyzes, and disseminates information for a specific purpose. Well, that's an okay start for now, but we'll take that a little further as we go on. You probably noticed that the word information showed up in both the title and the definition. Ah, we like to do that in information systems. We like acronyms as well, and you'll, you'll find that out as well. So a good place to start would be to define information. So we'll define information as data that is organized in some way that makes sense. Well, hang on because I just used another word that might need a definition and that's data. But we'll do that on the next slide. Okay, so what's data? Well, we consider data to be this raw and unprocessed. Data might be, for instance, a huge list of names or numbers or even a combination of the two. But by itself, data is not all that useful. It becomes useful once we organize it, summarize it, or group it. Then the data becomes easier to understand and then at that point we would call it information. So here's an example of data. Sure, we see some, maybe some cities and maybe something else and some numbers, some states there, but we really don't know anything about it. Uh, we don't know what it, what it represents, but we'll start here because data is the beginning point of information. We need data in order to generate the information. So here you see that same data, but it's organized. It's now information. We have the cities that were uh, listed in that data. They're grouped together so we know exactly what cities we're talking about or what's in the data. We also see a number of clients and uh, they've been kind of summarized in group. And so now it becomes a little bit more useful to us. We've turned the raw data into useful information. One more level above information is knowledge. And Information is very useful, but managers use that information to go further. They, they will analyze the information and they'll use it to look for trends or make decisions or, or make inferences. And so for an example, uh, from the information that we saw in the last slide, it would appear that our managers in the Reno area are doing a better job than the other cities because we have more clients. And so that's an inference or we're trying to use that information to make a decision and we would uh, refer to that as knowledge. Well, it's time to introduce you to a couple of very important concepts. The first concept, if you notice the title of this slide, it says five components of MIS. I've added an M to the information systems. The M stands for management. And so for the purposes of this class, uh, we will be talking about information systems that support management. So management information systems are composed of five specific elements. And those elements, as you can see, are hardware, software, data, procedures, and people. If any one of those elements is missing, then we do not have a complete information systems. You'll learn more about each of these components as we progress through the course. Um, I also just want to make a quick note that all of the papers that you turn in for this class should clearly and thoroughly discuss all five of these components because all five are needed for an information system. So if I ask you in uh, one of your assignments to describe an information system, make sure you include all five of those. Now at the two ends, notice that we have hardware and people. And the other components, the software, the data, and the procedures help us bridge the gap between the people and the hardware. And again, you'll learn more about this as we continue in this course. All right, so we've defined information systems and management information systems and told you about data and information. So you're probably wondering, you know, why do I have to study this stuff? Why am I going to spend so much time learning about management information systems? Well, it might be a required course and that might be why you're here. Uh, but maybe there's some other reasons as well. But first off, we need to understand that information systems are really all about business. They're everywhere. Uh, it, it's a very, very rare business that would not have an information system. And I, I would probably posit at this point that you can't even find any that don't rely on information systems to some some uh, degree. And information systems can help companies improve their competitiveness, their productivity, and their profitability. So they're very, very important for businesses. Well, the real reason to study management information systems is you. 
The more you understand and know about management information systems and technology, the more desirable you'll become as an employee to a, a potential targeted or future em employer. If you don't study management information systems and technology, you'll get left behind in the work world. You will not become as desirable. Uh, plus, if you do get a job and, and you do encounter information systems, if you haven't studied it beforehand, you're going to have a much longer learning curve than someone that has invested the time uh, to go through this course.